Grinding your own meat is a great way to level up your burger game, but most people consider the types or the blends of meat that they put in there. A little brisket, add a little sirloin, and you're gonna have a great burger. But how coarse or fine you grind your meat is often not a consideration. And I wanted to find out if it makes a difference, so let's get into the grind. The goal is to grind up some meat with both fine and coarse settings and then cook it a few different ways to see if it matters. I'm using chuck roast because it has the right ratio of meat to fat for a good 80-20 burger. And to prep it for the grinder, I cut it into 1 inch cubes and put them in the freezer to firm up. Most grinders come with a coarse 3 8 inch plate and a fine 1 quarter inch plate. The size of the holes determine how big the meat chunks end up once they're ground. I'm starting by grinding all of the meat with a coarse plate to get things started. Now the fat in the meat isn't going to be evenly distributed on the first pass, so I do a regrind where I grind all the meat once, mix it up, and pass it through a second time, and that makes sure you get a bit of fat in every single bite. Then I swapped out the plate for the quarter inch plate and ground half the meat again, and that way it'll be nice and fine and it's much easier than going through the fine plate on the first pass. It's pretty easy to tell the difference as it comes out of the grinder. A five to six ounce burger patty is about the perfect size for me and I separated the meat into even five ounce burger portions to keep things consistent between the two grinds. Then I shaped two patties of each by hand and left the third portion as a ball for smash burgers. And I have a burger press, but it's way too easy to smash them and get an overly dense burger, which is why I choose to do it by hand. When you look at these burgers up close, you can see an even distribution of fat in the fine ground burger and the chunky nature of the coarse ground. And the way you grill your burgers can have an impact as well, and that's why I'm gonna do a smash burger. I'm gonna grill one on a charcoal grill and grill another on the gas grill. Smash burgers on the flat top griddle are one of my favorites because you get nice crispy edges. And this griddle is ready to go, so let's get started. This was only my second time making smash burgers on this flat top griddle, and I completely messed it up. I redid the test and the results were different and I'll show you why later on in the video. To contrast that, I can almost grill burgers on the gas grill blindfolded, going entirely by muscle memory. That always results in a well done, but juicy burger. This shouldn't be confused with the burnt to cinders burgers you'll get at most other places because they overcook them in fear that you'll end up sending it back if there's anything other than shades of gray. It's completely possible to be both well done and juicy without putting a cup of mayonnaise on it. With burgers this juicy, toasted buns are an absolute requirement to avoid them from getting soggy. And here's a top-down view of the sear, as well as a side-by-side -side cross section, so that way you can make your own opinion while I grill up some more on the charcoal grill for the taste test. While the gas grill is convenient for time's sake, I definitely prefer the charcoal grill for burgers because it gives a bit of smoke flavor, but it feels a little bit wrong not topping these with a slice of cheddar, as well as a bunch of other toppings and sauces. But this taste test is all about the meat, so I'm keeping things nice and plain. Now that it's cooked on the charcoal grill, let's jump in for the taste test. And for the fine. So I can't believe how big of a difference it is between the coarse ground and the fine ground. It was way more than I saw on the other ones. The coarse ground was much, much juicier than the fine one. And I think it's because of that texture. Those big pockets allow the moisture and the fat to stay in the burger, as well as the bigger chunks of fat take longer to render down. And so if you're gonna cook it well done, it really looks like that's the way to go. Kenji Lopez all did a similar experiment, but with very different results. He preferred a fine ground burger when he cooked it over charcoal, whereas I preferred the coarse ground. The big difference is he cooked his medium and I cooked mine well done. But there's one place that we both agreed and that is with the smash burger. The big difference here is the fine ground allows you to get a better crust on the bottom because you get more contact with that griddle. And it was pretty obvious once we flipped it over, the coarse ground one broke, whereas this fine ground one was still stuck together perfectly fine. And when we got to do the taste test, it was the clear winner. And if you want a deep dive on how to grind meat for burgers, I'll show you in this video how to do it both with and without a grinder.